Bei Jiang is from Tianjin, China. She came to Vancouver five years ago. She had just completed a master's program in the United States. I think mostly it's about the ease, because there's not many um, social works that I feel I have to be there, and I can choose not to be there. The freedom combined with open spaces are two of Beijing's favorite things about this city. And also in China, a lot of universities, they, I don't know now, but at that time, I don't feel they have a lot of protection for students. For example, they don't have a private environment, a private um, unit to send a student to talk to them. For example, here we have the, the sexual harassment office, right? You feel safe to have a private conversation with an expert. I also went to the counseling service here in UBC when I had some, like, so much stress. I didn't use or I wasn't aware of any of such um, service in China. Beijing found the bustling life of Tianjin too much for her. I went to the new built um, Tianjin Library, which is like a masterpiece of work architecture, but they're so crowded and uh, you cannot find a seat. And also the security, the security check make me a little bit uncomfortable. That's something that matters to Beijing. She wants to be able to live freely and choose for herself. Even being a vegetarian is tough in China. To her, every meal there seemed to include meat. I was trying, but it's so difficult. So in China, I want to be a vegetarian, but once I went to those ban like banquet and the family unions, I don't mind to eat with them, but like here I can actually have my own choice. And Life here is different. It's really good. It's like heaven to live in. Her plan is to continue to live in Vancouver. Nan Nan Xu is from Beijing. He and his wife completed their master's program at Columbia University in New York City. He came to Vancouver to expand his knowledge of the world. His plan is to return to China. Nanan Xu knows China is where he wants to be, but it is not an easy decision. He and his wife had a baby in November. He wants the child to live in a safer environment. Chinese academics with kids have all kinds of competing concerns the environment, social freedoms, and even language to decide on. Hui Lan Xu is from southern China. Nanan Xu appreciates the clean air in Vancouver. Although Nanan Xu knows he will return to China, the decision isn't an easy one. There is also the problem of affordability. China is an expensive place to live.
，就是一辈子就在供这套房子。一挣五六千，在北京，如果你不买房，如果你你你要买房的话，肯定是不够的，对吧 ？Their impression does reflect the actual situation. Compare Beijing to Toronto. In 2017, the average housing price in Beijing is 67,951 Chinese yuan per square meter, and the average monthly salary is 9,942 Chinese yuan. This means for every square meter of a new condo, you need to spend your salary of seven months. And while in Toronto it is four thousand four hundred fifty-nine dollars per square meter, and you earn an average of four thousand eight hundred twenty-five per month, this means you still have more than three hundred dollars surplus after paying for one square meter of a new condo. But Nanan is a native person from Beijing. He doesn't have to worry about living in a big city in China. I most likely like Beijing weather. Born in Beijing, the summer season, the spring and autumn are very distinct. 冬天足够冷，夏天足够热，春秋也比较美。那温哥华呢？就是我感觉夏天太干燥了，冬天下雨太多了。我不太喜欢天天下雨的这种气候。就说从气候来讲的话，温哥华肯定我觉得没有北京舒服。我觉得北京出行还是方便一些。北京虽然很大，但是呢，有很多这种选择，是吧？当然了，最最不方便的就是自己开车，你不好找停车位，又堵。对吧？你还可以公交，你可以地铁，对吧？可以骑那个摩拜，叫叫什么共享共享单车，对吧？我自己还爱骑自行车，所以我觉得出行比较方便。His decision is different from Hui Lan Xu. She thinks Toronto offers her convenience as both a scholar and a mother. 你你你连 Google 都被封了，对不对？就就不是不是那么的方便啊。国内我读过一个硕士，然后再过来的。我国内硕士的导师就给我发过几次邮件，让我帮他下 paper 这样。因为我胆子比较小，我在国内经常不敢过马路，就是太混乱了。红绿灯也也不会看，就只敢跟着一堆人一起过马路。我走在那个最中间这样。然后这边的话，就觉得各种秩序会好一些。然后就是，呃，你有了小孩之后，会觉得在这边。The other consideration is their parents. Just as an old Chinese saying goes, the time you become the parent of a kid is when you understand your parent as a kid. I definitely want to return to my parents' side. Just like this child, right? We are just. It's like the Chinese saying, "Parents can't be both sides." But if you don't return, if you don't return to China with your parents, you're just being both sides and being both sides. Fei Wang is also from southern China. He came to Canada to pursue his PhD degree in engineering. 读了本科的时候呢，在我进行答辩的时候，啊，就是学士论文答辩嘛。然后那个时候的评委呢，就是几个教授呢，呃，给我的评价是，人家做的很好，然后呢，甚至可以达到硕士毕业的水平。然后在我硕士来弄的时候呢，然后那个时候的评委，包括武大的，然后好几个大学的知名的教授，然后给我评价呢。我应当是可以达到硕士，呃，可以达到博士毕业水平。所以那个时候我在想，如果我还在这个国内来进行这样一个读下去的话，我甚至可能挑战性不会特别大。The biggest challenge for Wang was English. That's why his options narrowed down to Australia or Canada. 之所以为什么定这两个，是因为他只需要考雅思，不需要考 GRE。然后我的英语就，英语是我一个特别大的一个软肋。嗯，嗯。这个非常不好意思的跟你讲，我考雅思考了四次才考过，啊，也用了好几年的时间。所以如果再让我去去美国啊，或者是怎么样来，再要考个 GRE 就疯掉了。Wang started off living off campus, but last year he moved on to be closer to his school. 我的一个习惯呢是，如果我有想法的时候，时候我能够立即的把它做到一个实施的一个状态。所以来学校之后呢，进入到学校会方便很多。One thing he love about Vancouver is the distance. He can remain far away from complicated relationships back home. You, for example, in the U.S., there are relationships with the upper class, there are close relationships with friends, there are different relationships. Your treatment level is different. Your treatment level is different. When the holiday comes, what you do on every holiday is different. For this side, you have to do what you want to do for yourself. 然后与你相处的比较近的就那么几个，单独那么几个，相处好了就行了。Wang is working to save money for her kids' education. 
It would have been easier if he had applied for a Chinese government scholarship, but he didn't want to return to China to get it. This scholarship requires the receiver to return to the country to work for at least two years after graduation. 就是一个限制，啊，就是一个限制。我阿五呢，不希望你这样这一个限制下。我想回来呢，我不需要你有任何的这个要求，我就回来了。然后我如果觉得呢，这个在外边呢，刚开始在外边呢，可能会有一个更好一些，然后暂时的选择在外面，而不会局限于最初两年呢，两年多的时间呢。Far from the south, Raging Zhao comes from Harbin in northern China. She studied in Beijing for seven years. Then one summer, she did an exchange to the United States. That experience changed her life. We may think that you are a tourist, you are ignorant, you don't have any value in society, you are not fit for 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 society. At the beginning, I was very scared because people say America is not good. But 其实在那儿待了一个月之后吧，我还觉得挺有意思的。那些流浪汉天天就，你看他们自己可能穿的衣服比较破哈，但是他们那个狗，有的时候带着大狗，品种特别名贵，而且那个狗这个毛梳的，那就一尘不染的，狗可干净了啊。然后他们有的时候会拿着吉他，啊，黄昏的时候半夜呃傍晚的时候，他们就弹个吉他呀，哼个小曲啊。当然时不常的也也也跟人借个一刀两刀的那种哈，就是 homeless 嘛。那你觉得他们也？他们也没有对这个社会造成危害。首先是这个是肯定的。另外一个，你觉得当流浪汉真的是羞耻的吗？当 homeless 真的是，我不觉得。我觉得他们很享受他们的生活。嗯，我觉得这个是这么多年我一直印象很深刻，也是后来让我坚持的去走这条其实挺难的这个艰难的这个申请的道路，一直走下来的原因。我觉得我还应该多走走，多看看。嗯，把我的这个，让我的这个心呢再包容点儿。Zhao's parents were worried for her safety. They didn't understand that a single woman could live alone in another country. 住到校外可能也不太安全。另外一个也比较远，他这个学校又不是在那个当烫呀，或者是市中心的。呃 ，UVC 这是有一个树林给隔开了，反正晚上也挺黑的。Even staying on campus, Zhao still misses Beijing when she goes out. 说实话，我在我在国内的时候，我出去玩更放心点儿。北京的治安是非常好的啊，非常好。我。到现在我，我我我我也去过挺多地方旅游，但是我没觉得哪儿的治安比比北京还好。Just like Wang, the biggest difficulty for Zhao is language. 有的时候确实就包括课堂上的这种演讲啊什么的，有的时候觉得如果是让我用中文去讲，那我就不用准备了。你说这用英文，我好像准备多少次我都嫌不够是吧？都觉得自己讲不好。Zhao is unsure about what comes next for her. 真不是说多么多么的不喜欢国内的一些。呃，规则也好，或者什么也好，我才来到国外，真不是这样。我是单纯的，就是想看看另一个世界是什么样子。Of all these young people have individual reasons for deciding to leave or stay. They also have a number of things in common. 干什么都很方便，就是买东西，然后就是你上淘宝啊，然后快递什么的也特别快，然后购买的平台比较多。这边的话，在我觉得网购就没有那么方便，在亚马逊买啊什么的，有时候货没有那么缺。在国内，我觉得基本上想买的话，基本上什么都可以找到，对不对？然后，嗯，然后就是那个移动支付啊，在国内现在真的就是带手机出去就 OK 了。但是这边的话还不是特别的普及，甚至有些店连信用卡都不能用。在国内买衣服肯定还是方便一些、便宜一些。我喜欢在淘宝上买。Politics used to be a big part of the equation, not so much anymore. 呃，能理解，但是我们可能因为我也不是那个时代的人吧，啊，因为没有遇到过。你得就很大荣幸才会被盯上吧。其实你在国内啊，也也都是能说，什么都能说。你在你在美国啊、欧美的这套系统里面，你也并不是什么都能说的。The research environment, from academic freedom to institutional support, is another big draw in Canada. Canada. 对于国内的时候呢，你会层层的审批，就是你会到
到系之后，先到院里，院里再到学校，学校又到省里，省里可能又到某个部，就会周期特别长。你要买个设备或者建一个楼，等等什么玩意儿的，你可能花个一两年，你都不一定搞得下来。我知道，在国内，如果你读硕士或读博士的话，跟老师的更多种人身依附关系，不知道你怎么用英文来翻译这个词啊。就是你跟他的关系不仅仅是一种学术上的关系，你可能得帮老师去跑跑腿儿、报个销，帮老师去呃做点杂活儿，接送个孩子。In Canada, it is more respectful of personal choices, no matter in academia or in daily life. 人和人之间的界限是比较清楚的，是吧？你没有必要去。你没有必要去跨过这个界限，这个各自过各自的，呃，没有什么会对你平通论足，不论你穿得好也好，穿得不那么好也好，啊、呃，仍然你是过你的生活，别人是过别人的生活，别人干预你，别人也不会会应了你。所有中国留学生来了以后，都会觉得自己好像无法，所谓无法融入主流社会。但是我在美国两年，在这边将近两年的时间，我慢慢发现，不是说你无法融入这个社会，而是说。哪怕你融入了，也不会达到你在国内那种跟你的同学、你的老师、身边的人打成一片哦，你中有我，我中有你那种感觉。大家相处的就是都特别紧密，然后住同一个宿舍呀，然后除了一起上课，还一起逛街啊、吃饭呢、啊、一起玩啊，就是这种，我觉得这个回忆是特别美好的。These academics are used to being far away from home, but they have all found ways to maintain relationships. 哎。我妈不想我呀，我我还好吧，因为我毕竟是十八岁离开家啊，十八岁离开家。我在北京的时候，可能一年能回去个两三次吧。来这儿之后，可能一年最多也只能回去一次。但是对我来说，差别也不是特别的大。嗯，想肯定是有的，但应当还好吧，没什么问题。我的基本上从零七年，零七年走出家乡之后呢。基本上都是那个样子，一年回去也就一次到两次吧。